My name is Jimmy Scroggins, and I'm so glad that you're here, ready to be trained to turn everyday conversations into gospel conversations. Let me just outline for you what we're going to do over the course of the next six weeks. We're going to start each week after this one with a time of what we call focused prayer. It's prayer specifically for the people each of you know who are far from God. Then you'll watch a short training video like you're doing right now and take some notes on the listening guide in your training book. I'm going to direct you straight into what we're calling your class training reps. Your facilitator is there to help you practice in here, and then he or she will facilitate a time of sharing stories to celebrate what happens as you go out into the real world and do your personal training reps, which will be assigned to you at the conclusion of each week. This is very important. No matter what you do, don't skip your reps. Okay, let me just tell you a little bit about how we develop this gospel conversation guide called The Three Circles. I'm the lead pastor of Family Church, and we're a network of neighborhood churches in Palm Beach County, Florida. We're a multi-campus, multi-generational, and multicultural church made up of people who are about 50% English-speaking Anglo, 30% Hispanic Latino, and 20% African American Caribbean Black. We also have political and socioeconomic diversity in our church. We live in an area with a lot of irreligious and unchurched people. The Barna Research Group recently reported that our city has the highest percentage of never church people of any city in the United States. When I considered that there are millions of people living in our region who remain far from God, I knew we had to get serious about reaching them. Now I've had meetings and attended conferences to figure out how to best do that in this day and in our time, but then I just went back to the Bible, to the book of Acts where this movement called Christianity actually started. As you may know, the book begins with the Great Commission. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, Jesus tells his followers that they will receive power and be his witnesses all over the world, both locally and globally. The disciples gather together, have a 10-day prayer meeting, and then the Holy Spirit shows up in a big way. When the Holy Spirit comes, this ragtag group of fishermen and ex-Roman IRS agents go out and begin to preach the gospel of Jesus. On the first day they do it, 3,000 people repent of their sins and believe in Jesus. They get baptized and start the very first megachurch. If you keep reading through the book of Acts, you'll see how the gospel spreads like wildfire. In Acts chapter 3, Peter and John turn an everyday conversation into a gospel conversation, healing the lame beggar. Peter preaches another sermon and 5,000 people repent and believe. Acts chapter 4 tells us that Peter and John can't stop talking about the things they have seen and heard. By Acts chapter 6, the number of believers have multiplied greatly, and a movement is breaking out. In Acts chapter 8, the persecution is so intense that believers begin to scatter, taking the gospel message with them. By Acts chapter 17, these brand new believers are accused of turning the world upside down. And in Acts chapter 19, we read that over the course of just two years, all the residents of Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jew and Greek. Historians estimate that this statement means 8.2 million people were reached within that first two years. Not every one of them became believers, but they all had the opportunity to hear and respond to the gospel. And this is our goal. So go ahead and open up your trainee guide and begin writing. Let's write this down. We want every resident of our communities to have repeated opportunities to hear and respond to the gospel. As we're obedient to tell, and as they hear, many will repent and believe. We can turn our world upside down, just like they did in the book of Acts. We don't have to wonder what in the world the Holy Spirit wants to do. He wants to do what he did the first time he came into a group of believers. He empowered them, led them, and guided them to preach the gospel, the crucifixion, and the resurrection of Jesus. They invited people to repent of their sins, believe in Christ, and be baptized. This is what the Holy Spirit wanted to do on the first day he showed up, and it's what the Holy Spirit wants to do right now. It's what he wants to do in West Palm Beach, Florida, where I live, and in the community, town, or city in which you live. So here's some thoughts as we get started. First, we have to get serious about reaching far from God people. Our mission hasn't changed. Jesus still tells us to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This isn't just for the professionals like me or your pastor. It's not just for those who've been to seminary. This mission is for all ordinary, everyday people who call themselves Christ followers. Second, we have to get serious about prayer and the power of the Holy Spirit. On the one hand, these were ordinary people, but they had also just been praying together for 10 days. Their focused prayer preceded the spiritual power they received to do God's work. Each week, we're going to start with a time of focused prayer. We call it focused prayer because it is prayer only for the people each of you know who are far from God. You will pray for these people because we believe that the Holy Spirit wants to empower you to do what Jesus would do if Jesus were physically present on this earth. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He leads, teaches, encourages, and helps believers to do, say, and to think what Jesus would do, say, and think if Jesus were physically here. Third, we have to get serious about having more gospel conversations. If we're going to reach millions of people, it's not going to be because all the preachers really white knuckle it and amp up their efforts. We need hundreds of thousands of Christians, just like you, having millions of gospel conversations every single day. In the book of Acts, it was the Joes, not the pros, that got the gospel out. Through our interactions with far from God people across South Florida, we have developed a way to share the gospel that we call the three circles. The three circles is a gospel conversation guide, and we're going to train you to use the three circles to turn everyday conversations into gospel conversations. We're going to train you, and we're going to help you get reps. It may seem awkward and unnatural to practice the three circles over and over again, but think about the importance of practice in other areas of our lives. I know when I played football, my coach made us do drills every single day. We ran the same place over and over until we could execute them perfectly. If we wanted to perform well at game time, we knew we had to get reps at practice. Now, Malcolm Gladwell in his book, Outliers, concludes that it takes 10,000 hours of practice before someone truly excels in his or her field. Gladwell suggests that almost anybody could become an expert at something if they would get 10,000 reps. He isn't prescribing some magic formula for success, but he's emphasizing the importance of repetition in any serious endeavor, while ours is a serious endeavor. I know you're here because you love Jesus and you want to do what he's asked us to do. I know you're here because you love people and you want to make a difference in their lives. I know you see and live with the brokenness that's all around us and you want to do your part to fix it. So we're going to train you to do just that. We're going to help you get a lot of gospel reps. Now I'm going to go through the three circles right now so you can get your first rep. So go ahead and get your pen, your paper, or your napkin and draw this out with me. The Bible tells us that God has a design for every single area of our lives. He cares about everything about us. He cares about our marriages. He cares about our parenting, our money, our jobs. He cares about every aspect of our lives. And the Bible says that if we'll operate our lives according to God's design, then we'll live in the arena of God's blessing. The problem is that every single one of us has a tendency to depart from God's design because we want to do things our own way. We depart from God's design. The Bible has a word for this, and the word is sin. And the Bible says that all of us have sinned and we all fall short of God's design for our lives. When we sin against God and depart from His design, we end up in a place we call brokenness. Now, we've all been in broken places in our lives. Brokenness feels like shame. It feels like regret, emptiness. It's the feeling of being used. It's loneliness. When we end up in brokenness, though, it feels like a bad thing, but in a lot of ways, it's a good thing because it calls our attention to the need to change. When we're in brokenness, we try to change things, and so we maybe dive into another relationship or we try to make more money or we try to numb the pain of our brokenness with drugs and alcohol, but whatever it is, we figure out that the change that we need doesn't really come from in here. The change we really need comes from somewhere else. And the Bible says there's very good news for every one of us. And the good news is that God wants to heal the broken places in our lives. The Bible has a word for good news and the word is gospel. And the gospel is the simple story of how Jesus Christ was the son of God he came to earth as a man, 
He died on the cross for the sins of the world, and he was raised from the dead. Now, when Jesus was dying on the cross, God did a miracle. He took the sins of the world, that's your sins and my sins, and he put them on Jesus. But then when God raised Jesus from the dead, God proved that Jesus could do everything for us that he said he could do. He can forgive us of our sins, and he can heal the broken places in our lives. So the kind of change we need doesn't come from out there. The kind of change we need comes from the gospel, and the Bible has a word for the kind of change that we need, and that word is repent. Repent means to change our mind, to change our heart, to change our direction. And when we repent of our sins and we believe the gospel story, the story of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, then the Bible says that Jesus comes into our lives, he forgives our sins, and he begins to heal the broken places in our lives. And because he does that, then we have the opportunity to recover and pursue God's design for our lives. Now, when God comes into our life, he then takes us and he sends us back out into a broken world where we can tell others about how Jesus can heal them. So now it's your turn. I want you to pair off right now, right there in the room, and pair off with one another and go through the three circles. Don't talk about going through the three circles. Don't make excuses about not knowing what to say. Just do the best that you can right now to share the three circles with someone else, just as if they've never heard it before. Let each person get in at least one rep and then switch partners and do it again. Your facilitator will help you team up. This is practice time. Now let's get those reps.